thoughts and some lessons and memories uh, working with Jane. And like many of us in this room, we had the privilege of knowing her and working with her. I learned an awful lot from her, and the one thing I think that really stands out for me as a from the bureaucrat was to be as unbureaucratic as possible. And that's easier said than done, and I think she gave me the courage to do that uh, once I became the chief planner to really move forward. I guess the question I just wanted to put out to everybody is, look at this, 177 walks, 180 cities around the world. This question is, why is such a simple idea as a walk become a worldwide event? And I think the answer is because civil, civic dialogue matters because it leads to civic action. There's a direct connection. And it helps us understand our city uh, and how to deal with ongoing change, especially in a place like Toronto, where we're going through this phenomenal transformation that we all love. It also makes me think of David Crombie, one of the other people that I think we all admire. And he asked three fundamental questions that everybody has to answer in their life. And here's what they are. Who am I? Where do I belong? And how do I behave? Everybody has to answer. And I think civic dialogue in Jane's walk helps us to answer all those questions in a number of ways. First of all, you know, who are we? Well, we're all Torontonians, whether we're actual Canadian citizens or not, we're all Torontonians. And we have a vested interest in our communities and our, the future health of our city. It has to be respected, nurtured, and harnessed because it's very powerful. Jane's walk fosters new contacts. All the people would be that tonight, more that you'll meet throughout this weekend, and relationships that can build and grow and help our city prosper. It's also very personal. Another lesson I remember from Jane was she said, see, feel, touch. You can talk all you want, especially as a planner, about ideas and policies, but if you can't point to something and get something actually done, built, so people can go see it, feel it, experience it, walk in it, touch it, and say, gee, I kind of like this. It's not what I thought this would be. And I'll give you the perfect example. Uh, I, I, I've had this happen over and over again in terms of the mixed-use buildings that we are all now finally seeing pop up from our arterial roads and main streets. And almost without fail, every single application that comes forward, I don't care if it's like Licks in the Beach, or in Harvest here, or uh, Lower Ossington, or wherever, People object, it's just part of the process. And you know what happens? You go through a long process, maybe it gets modified, maybe it doesn't. The end result for building gets built. And I tell you, seven out of 10 people who objected to the building, when they see it, they put it, they buy a unit. They say, oh my God, I didn't know it was like that. This is pretty good, right? So, very important lesson. Uh, it also builds local pride and uh, peer pressure, which should never be underestimated in getting things done in our city. And finally, it enables communities, all of you and all of us throughout the city, to have something to believe in and stand up for uh, against attacks over time. <coughs> we go back to James Davis, but I have an expressway story that everybody knows well. I